I'm sure you're enjoying the cluster so far. We're now in cluster three, the first topic of this cluster for your qualification, national certificate in business administration services. In this topic, we'll be discussing, or rather this cluster, we'll be discussing employee relations and teamwork. In this cluster, the unit standards we'll be dealing with is operating in a team, introduce new staff to the workplace, and demonstrate an understanding of employment relations in an organization. In cluster one, we found out what is a team and how a group forms into a team, how to interact during different situations, including conflict. In this topic, we discuss how to operate as a team player. Now, before we can actually operate as a team player, it's important for us to understand the business processes. The business process takes a route from inception of an idea right through to achieving the idea. We know that various outputs need an input to be achieved. So we need to put inputs like gathering information. We need to perform communication. We need to actually do the tasks to be able to get to the end point. Let's explore the inputs as teams that are required to achieve the output. Operating as a team means an ongoing building of the team, adjustment to organizational changes, and ensuring there's mutual adjustment to the overall objective. Each department within an organization is a team, as they're working towards a common goal within the organization. Common teams found in business are finance, human resources, sales, marketing, quality control, IT, etc. I'm sure you can think of some others as well that you maybe have encountered up to this far. If we take a look at a couple of examples in terms of the different teams, for instance, human resources, they work towards achieving human resources activities for the organization and at the same time complying with regulations set out and governed by the labor law. They will look at things like recruitment, employee relations, contracts, annual leave, wellness, wellness of employees, development of employees, all that sort of thing. Finance, on the other hand, ensures that all finances are carefully recorded and controlled to provide financial support to the operation of the organization. Their inputs would probably include things like the income, expenses, reporting on the income and expenses, profits and losses, asset management, reconciliations. Those types of things would be their inputs to provide the output of a total finance reconciliation. Now, working towards the outputs that we discussed earlier means that you work towards a common goal. You provide a service to your organization and then get paid for that level of service. So each team has team members and each team has an organization and that requires of each team member to do a specific task. Each team member must be linked to tasks that match and enhance their skills. This aligns passion to the business mission and or profession, providing a structure for optimum team organization. So we have a team member, they have a skill, they get placed in this particular position in a seat which provides a particular job function for that seat and for that service you receive the salary. To explain inputs, task processes and outputs, we'll use the HR department as an example. So the human resources department is the work team and they provide the input for the function. The task processes would be what they need to do to achieve their goal. Inputs provide the design, culture, training and technical processes in order to run the department. The task processes is how the communication, coordination, task technologies and structures are put together to perform. In other words, how each team member is put into a specific position, how they communicate, how they coordinate and how they actually perform the tasks. Thus, the output is a performance, the performance is satisfaction of achieving the goal and the results achieved, making them the outputs. 
Another factor that plays a very big role in teams is the socio-emotional process, which is the relationship building, the cohesion and the trust, as we learned in cluster one, in terms of the forming, norming, performing of the actual team. One of HR's functions is to ensure the BCA, in other words, the Basic Conditions of Employment Act is enforced within an organization. For example, the team needs to control leave of employees. The inputs would be how they are going to do this, a system, approach, training needed, and the processes to control the leave. The task processes would, however, be they're going to communicate, coordinate what they are going to use and who is going to do what. The outputs would then be a system where they can inform employees of leave due, when leave must be taken, etc. This altogether gives rise to the socio-emotional process where relationships are built, cohesion is put in place and trust is formed. Now typical team structures would look something like this and is known as a functional organizational structure. In cluster one, we learned how to communicate between levels of authority in this type of structure. It shows the authority levels, the function of each member in the team, and what role each member of the team needs to play. Being a team player involves mutual agreement from each member and signs of respect. We can simply say that the six most important words used in a team is, sorry, I made a mistake. The five most important words is, you did a good job. Praise is important for morals and performance. When we get praise, we people, then we feel motivated. We want to go on. The four most important words, however, is, what is your opinion? Making people feel belonged, making them feel important in terms of making sure that you get their opinion as well. The three most important words, would you mind? being polite, being kind. By using these words, it shows respect. When we make a mistake, being kind and polite costs nothing. Now let's take a look at the two most important words and the one most important word. The two most important words in a team, thank you. And the one very most important word in a team is we. When we refer to a task and or something that needs to be done, Using we when referring to something shows that it includes everyone and gives a sense of belonging to something or someone. Now we have the least most important word is I. No one is alone in a team. Everybody works together to form and ultimately perform through support and assistance to achieve the goal, not personal gain. Team members must contract to the following behaviours to show a functional part in the team. They must want to be a team player, serve and support, think creatively, perform, achieve, be responsible, be recountable, have a want to be around attitude and manage conflict. To build team cohesion, team contracts assist in building cohesion, creates a sense of belonging and commitment, which in turn motivates, supports each team member. Team members work together in unison, performing various tasks. One has an idea, the other one communicates, the other one is polite, kind, um, does personal contact with clients, um, conducts business, the other one um, drafts documents or takes control of documents, the other one gives instructions. This is very important when we're performing various tasks while behaving and conducting the tasks efficiently. To do this, an effective team will have the following characteristics. Believe in a common purpose and goal. They'll have clear roles and understanding of the roles accept role and expertise of the leader, clear guidelines provided by leadership, establishing of our relationships and communication. These all form the characteristics of an effective team. And that's a wrap for topic one in cluster three. Let's take a look at what we learned. We must be a team player. Team players build relationships and air problems. 
healthy conflict is good, a hierarchy forms team structures in an organization, and forming team contracts is essential for cohesion and relationship building. Communication levels should always be high and efficient.